Hi, I'm Kaylee, a librarian here at Mentor Public Library. And I'm Meg, also a librarian, and welcome to this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg, where each time we give you a different book recommendation on a specific theme. Today, we are going to be looking at new summer reads. So hopefully you've been uh, reading some books, you know, for our summer reading program, earn your tickets. Um, but if not, just enjoy these recommendations we got for you. Yes. And all of the books we're going to talk about today are available in the library as well as online with your library card for free through Libby and Hoopla. All right, Meg, what's your new summer read? My new summer read is called Counterfeit by Kirsten Chen. And I love the tagline of this book. It says, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy a decent fake purse. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a very amusing little tale about two women who bond together to grow a counterfeit handbag scheme into a global enterprise. <laughs> I know, right? So our first character that the book focuses on is Ava Wong, and she has always played it safe. She's a rule-abiding lawyer with a successful surgeon husband, a beautiful house, and she seemingly has a perfect life. But beneath this facade, Ava's world is crumbling. Her marriage is falling apart. Actually, her lawyer business is kind of, she's hasn't really had a lot of work lately. It's kind of not working out either. And her toddler's tantrums are pushing her to the brink. <laughs> Enter Winnie Fang, Ava's enigmatic college roommate from mainland China who abruptly dropped out under mysterious circumstances. So this was 20 years ago. So now Winnie is looking to reconnect with her friend Ava. But Ava is very surprised when she sees Winnie again for the second time. Ava remembers her friend Winnie as a shy, awkward, kind of nerdy student. But now this is a total transformation. Winnie is all decked out in glamorous clothes and accessories, including a very deluxe handbag, which no, almost no one except for the top 1% in society could afford. So Ava's like, what is going on here? Well, it turns out the secret is Winnie has developed an ingenious counterfeit scheme that involves importing near exact replicas of luxury handbags. And now she needs someone with a U.S. passport to help her business progress even further. <laughs> she needs someone who no one would ever suspect of doing anything illegal. So Ava is the perfect person. Mm -hmm. So together they join forces. And this enterprise thrives beyond even their wildest expectations. And it also kind of gives Ava this new lease on life from her kind of doldrum she was in earlier. But then a threat looms. And when this threat looms, Winnie bails out. And now Ava is left to deal with the consequences all on her, her own. Ooh. So it's, it's a very fun, fast pace, and just humorous book. But it also kind of is fun to see these two women for different reasons kind of reach um, for something that was lacking in their lives earlier. And even if it's in a, a humorous way, it's just fun to see them strive for a better life. So <laughs> that does sound fun. It also reminds me of a couple different like movies, books I've read before with similar yeah. ideas of like, you know, getting stuck into this situation. Yeah. But. <laughs> All right, um, so my first one today is called By the Book by Jasmine Guillory. Uh, Jasmine Guillory is a name you might have heard before. She's become a pretty uh, popular author over the last several years with her fun romantic comedy books. This is her latest, and it just came out, I think, in the last month. So it's sure to be a popular one this summer. And By the Book, that's the title, By the Book, follows Isabel, a.k.a. Izzy, who is becoming sort of disillusioned in her work at a publishing house. At age 25, she already feels sort of stuck in a rut in her life. She's still just an editorial assistant, still living at home, still single, and still the only Black employee at the publishing house. And when an opportunity comes up for her to sort of prove herself that you know, she is valuable to this company and she can maybe get a promotion out of it, Izzy really jumps at the chance. The only problem is it requires her to go to California and try to tame a beastly man into delivering his promised manuscript on time. 
And this, the man is Bo, who is certainly not happy with Izzy being this pushy editorial assistant showing up at his door demanding the manuscript. And he really prefers to be sort of the recluse that he is. He likes his solitude in his giant house. He is sick of the limelight. And, you know, that's part of the reason he needs to write this memoir, though, to get him more money to maintain his lifestyle outside of the limelight. So he makes a deal with Izzy that she can help him. He needs the help. He needs that push, he discovers. And so he says that if she stays at his mansion with him and helps, he will actually write this book and hopefully get it in on time, which would really be beneficial for both of them. He gets the money as he gets the promotion. They have pretty different personalities and at first clash but soon find themselves succeeding in, you know, writing out this story and also getting to know one another, maybe even find something more. They have pretty different personalities and, you know, at first they clash a bit, but soon they find themselves succeeding and progressing in writing the book and also getting to know one, each other, one another a little bit better. And they might find that they have more in common than they first thought, and maybe there's a little spark between them. This book is a lot of fun. It's a modern romantic comedy, so it's got all of those sort of pratfall type, I think, things that we associate with the romantic comedies. And it's technically the second book in a series, but it certainly stands alone because uh, this is overlapping characters, not necessarily main characters that follow. And I saved the best part for last to tell you. This is actually a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Oh, okay. Get it? I is love it. it. And uh, uh, she also works for TAOT Publishing. Tale as old as time. Oh, nice. Perfect. Like, that sounds so sweet. I love it. And also Belle loved books. So this is perfect that she would work in the book industry. I actually was planning I, to say like how I love books that revolve around the book industry. And what better character than someone based off the ultimate Disney princess fairy tale book lover. So <laughs> I can tell And you. I love that this one is like, you know, one of those books that you can just really devour in an afternoon kind of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, very sweet. So my next one is a piece of historical fiction. Mm. Um, it is called Horse by Geraldine Brooks, and it's actually coming out this very month. And it's based on the remarkable true story of the record-breaking thoroughbred horse named Lexington, um, a horse that very famous in the 1800s. And it also tells the story of America's past and present through the people associated or invested in this very fast creature. So I love animals, I love dogs and horses. So this, you know, got me from the jump, but it actually is a very interesting mix of past and present. And also I credit one of the um, reviewers said that the uh, book gallops backwards and forwards in time to tell the story, which you know, <laughs> I like that. Ha ha. <laughs> um, so in the present, we meet Theo, an art historian who is researching 19th century equestrian paintings, as well as Jess, who is a specialist trying to uncover an old horse skeleton lodged somewhere in the Smithsonian. So there are two people kind of interested in equestrian history, I guess you could say. And as they go through their discoveries and research and you know, interact with each other, they make unexpected discoveries in connection with Lexington, the famous racehorse from the 1800s. Oh. So as we're learning about this, uh, the story flashes back to the 1850s, where we meet Jarrett Lewis, who is an enslaved groom for the horse Lexington. And Jarrett has a very special relationship with this horse. He bonded with it from the time that Lexington was just a small little foal, all the way up to when the horse is making record setting victories all across the South. In fact, I, he broke records for how fast, and he's actually still known as like the fastest horse in American racing history. So very big deal. But along the way, as we move, you know, between that present story and the past, um, we learn of Jared's desire for freedom, um, his love and connection with the horse. 
And also there's a little mystery surrounding like oil paintings of these horses, um, like that industry in the 1800s, pretty interesting. And also how the fragments that Theo and Jess discover, you know, teach them about their history as well as their, their, their presence. So I liked it. Anyone who loves horses, but anyone who's just kind of interested in American history, Mm -hmm. I think would be interested in this as well. Yeah, it sounds like it would have a lot of overlaps with a lot of things we're already familiar with. Um, And Geraldine Brooks is just an amazing author. So I'm sure anything of hers is going to have a long holds list too. (laughs) Yeah, true. (laughs) So get your hold on it. Okay, well, my next book is actually a historical fiction as well. So sort of ties in there a little bit with what you just talked about. This is The Lost Summers of Newport by Beatrice Williams, Lauren Willig, and Karen White. Uh, So this book is by three popular authors that you have probably heard of. Each of them has been very successful in their own right with their own books. But this is the fourth collaborative book I think they have all three done together. Um, And I actually was drawn to this one because a few months ago, my book club read one that was written by the three authors. And I really enjoyed that one too. So I was excited to see that they had another coming out. Uh, This title takes place in three separate timelines. And the way that the authors sort of have developed this style for their books, their collaborative efforts, is that each author writes one of those timelines but they never will tell you who wrote which. They keep that secret. That's interesting. Uh, So they're kind of becoming known for this style. This is, like I said, this is a fourth one where they've kind of done it this way. And uh, this one jumps between 1899, 1957, and 2019. So some pretty big differences there. So let's start with more present day. 2019, Andy is uh, living the dream, working for a reality home makeover show called Mansion Makeover. And she is working on the glorious, famous, but sort of falling apart Sprague Hall, once this lavish summer home in Newport, Rhode Island, amongst the elite of the elite. We're talking like Vanderbilt's upper class here. (laughs) and the house is beautiful and she loves it because she's fascinated by historical restoration but it's really a bit of disrepair which is why it's on the show and everything would be a lot easier if she didn't have to contend with the elderly owner Lucky Sprague and she is throwing all sorts of issues in their path Uh, and then in I'm going to jump farther back. 1899, we follow Ellen, who is a music teacher for the rich Maribel, who is hoping to snag a rich Italian husband. And of course, Ellen has lied to get this role as the music teacher because she has a background that otherwise would not have let her in with this upper crust environment. Mm -hmm. And then we have 1957, which is where we meet Lucia, AKA Lucky, uh, who has come to Rhode Island after fleeing Mussolini's Italy for her own safety. And she is pushed into marrying the wealthy Stye Sprague, but she is unhappy in this life when her heart is really with another. And also her husband has a wandering eye. So all three timelines <laughs> are occurring on their own, but they are obviously interlocked in some way. And you learn a little bit more from the future timeline about some of the past incidents, and it, they really overlap a lot more than you'd think. There's love, there's glamour, there's mystery, there's history, and it's all rolled into one fantastic package set against the beaches of Newport, Rhode Island. So I think it's the perfect book to dive into for vacation. Yeah, you said it. I I love the combination of like multiple powerhouse authors that people would be interested in. That's really cool. Also, I can imagine debating afterwards, you know, who wrote what, you know, what thread (laughs) 
narrative thread. I would immediately be trying to figure that out, probably to no avail. But and it is funny that you say that because there are people on like Goodreads reviews who will say, oh, well, I yeah. am sure that this right. author wrote this person and they will not reveal that. Exactly. See, <laughs> I love it. That is such an interesting way to tell a story. I love it. So thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg. We hope you got some great recommendations. Enjoy your summer and enjoy some of these great books. Yes, check out some of these new summer reads and hopefully you will get credit for them with the summer reading program. Wink, wink. (laughs) Happy reading.